Now, let's go um, one dimension up to three-dimensional space and the Clifford algebra or geometric algebra of three-dimensional space. In physics, this is also known as the Pauli algebra, and it can be represented by this two by two uh, matrices. And so, you see, these matrices play a fundamental role in quantum physics. And so, already you see how this approach can unify classical physics with these vectors and uh, quantum mechanics. Now, the vector basis of three dimensional space is simply E1, E2, and E3. And the algebra which will be generated uh, is already given here with the scalar one of grade zero, then the three vectors, and now we will have three bi vectors, and one tri vector, so we go for one dimension up, basically. And this is eight dimensional. And uh, this is the basis and how we call these elements, and uh, we also use these abbreviations, the products of two vectors, simply take the two indices the three vectors like the three indices. And as before, every bi vector by itself squares to minus one. And the product of two bi vectors we can compute and it gives the third bi vector. And so if we take the even subalgebra uh, of what we had here, so we take only grade zero elements and uh, grade two elements, we discard the odd grade elements of grade one and three. Then we get a subalgebra, and uh, this can be written, for example, as the basis is 1 minus e2, 3 minus uh, e3, 1 minus e1, 2. So take the bi vectors and the scalar 1, and this is then 1 to 1 isomorphic, uh, all the products which you can compute isomorphic to uh, quaternions with this linear basis. So if you're used to work with quaternions, you can continue to use everything what you know about quaternions. <coughs> And so this is not uh, by chance, because the even subalgebra, uh, which I have here, is the algebra of rotations. So you use it for computing rotations, as I will explain later. And um, you also use quaternions, and that's one of the big merits of quaternions. They have a very compact and efficient description uh, of rotations. And so this agrees uh, as well. And uh, therefore, you also get a geometric interpretation of quaternions. Quaternions are simply the unit side faces with orientation of a unit view uh, at the origin, and these are the three vectors, uh, E1, E2, and E3. And the pseudoscalar, uh, or unit tri vector, as it is also called, it gets often the special name I3 here to indicate, indicate the greatest. E1 times E2 times E3, and we can compute its square, and we get that it also squares to minus 1. And so therefore the inverse is simply minus I3, like a complex uh, imaginary unit, and then we uh, compute the product of, for example, uh, vector E1 with I3, and we find E2, 3, and the opposite product, uh, we can also compute it, and we find the same result, E2, 3, and that means that the two commute. And also the two other basis vectors which we have, we find they commute with this tri vector. That's a very nice property because it shows we have another um, element here, I3, and it commutes with every vector. And because, for example, a bi vector is also a product of vectors, therefore um, I3 also commutes with a bi vector because it commutes with A and with B. So it commutes with every element in the algebra. And that's called central. And the two together, the one and the I3, make a central subalgebra, commuting with every other element. And that is also with the I3 plus or minus one isomorphic to complex numbers. And that gives us a relationship uh, to complex biquaternions. So uh, I3 changes bi vectors into orthogonal vectors. If I compute a bi vector, product with I3, then I get a vector which is perpendicular on this I vector. And so every vector, with the help of this relationship, I can now write as a product of a bi vector and I3 here. Yeah. So I can write the complete basis with the help of the bi vectors, the scalar one and I3. And I3 acts like a complex number, 
So this is complexified quaternions. That's called one expression, one kind of fine quaternions. And so the whole uh, algebra basis of uh, this fiddle algebra of three dimensional Euclidean space can be written in terms of these complex quaternions and fine quaternions that can help you to understand a lot of uh, literature. So, uh, but this form, which I previously introduced first, uh, gives you this geometric interpretation of scalars, vectors, phi vectors, and tri vectors, and also helps in software uh, optimization in numerical or in, in making software fast. Okay, uh, now I'll tell you more about the geometric product, uh, about geometric product operations and transformations, how you can use now uh, the algebra and work with the algebra. For example, we can do a projection, and that's something which is not new to you, because simply we take the inner product, and we take it again, this makes a scalar, uh, having the cosine here, length times cosine, and then we take it uh, times a uh, divided uh, by a again. And so uh, here we have a itself, another length of a, so we take it times a inverse, and we get the conventional projection of one vector x onto another vector a. And the rejection is simply take x minus the parallel component, and if you go through the computation, it means to subtract the inner product part and the only left with the outer product part. So they are quite symmetric in the sense once you use the inner product, once you use the outer product, one gives you the parallel component, the other gives you the perpendicular component, a very nice way. Yeah, well that, that was it. Okay, now we go to reflections and what we just learned, how we can uh, describe the parallel and the perpendicular and vector part can be used then. And I want to describe a reflection at a hyperplane that is one dimension less and in three dimensions that's simply two. So a hyperplane in three dimensions is a normal plane uh, as you know it and this is kind of the head of a perpendicular of a normal vector here. And so I take the vector, I decompose it with, with respect to the normal vector, and reflection means that uh, the perpendicular component changes sign. The parallel component, um, no, no, the, 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 yeah, the parallel component is parallel to A, but normal to the plane, and this changes sign, and that's reflection. And so I write it here, and if you go through the computation, you find that uh, the reflected vector, which is on the other side of the mirror plane, simply has the form of the sandwich here. We take minus a inverse times x times a. And reflections at hyperplanes are nothing but what is known as householder transformations in matrix analysis. So you have a good expression for that now in the algebra as well. And if you do two reflections, uh, first, with the vector A here, the inner reflection, then the outer reflection with the vector B, the sign vanishes, and you get the product of A, B on the right side, and also its inverse on the left side. And so this R, this product I now call R, and it describes a rotation. And we already had this exponential form of the product of A and B, and um, now I use this exponential form here again. And um, the angle theta between uh, the two vectors is twice the um, rotation angle. So the, the rotation angle is twice the uh, angle between the two vectors. And this, in three-dimensional space, if I want to know the bivector of a plane, the unit bivector of a plane, which appears here, I simply take the outer product of two vectors in the plane and divide by the norm of the outer product uh, by this area, and then I have it uh, unit. And so this R here gives the spinner form of rotations, and that's fully replacing rotation matrices, and um, makes computation with rotations um, also as elegant as with uh, rotations in the complex plane. Uh, this kind of elegance of rotations in the complex plane is carried over to higher dimensions. Now combining reflections, um, you can make proofs. 
And so if you take an even number of reflections, you always get an effective rotation. If you take an odd, so an old missing number of reflections, it will give you a rotation followed by a reflection that's also called rotary reflection. So these transformations in flip-flop multiple are simply described by products of vectors, all normal to the hyperplanes which you use for the reflections. Products of vectors, they are versas. So here I have such a versa, a product of vectors, A1 to AR. And the inverse is simply uh, the reverse order and the inverse of each vector. So that makes this A inverse here. And all verses, they form a versa group because they have an inverse and a versus multiplication law. And this is uh, called gamma 30 or Lipschitz group or Clifford group. Different authors use uh, different names. And so this is a group of all reflections and rotations in R3. And in uh, this case here, you can write it as um, uh, either you have an um, element which has odd grade, or you have an element of even grade. Minus indicates odd grades, plus indicates uneven grades. This indicates reflections, rotary reflections, and this indicates um, the rotations here. So the even grade part gives the rotations, and here I've written the even grade part again explicitly, and you see the four coefficients, and that corresponds to quaternions. Now the reverse, which I have used on the previous slide, is useful in other cases as well. It's an involution if you reverse the order twice, and we come back to the original order. And it simply means to reverse the order from A1 to R, from R to 1. And um, some authors use the stagger symbol, some use the tilde, and some say transpose in instead of reversion. It's an actual automorphism. Now, the group which I have introduced has a subgroup when uh, A times A reverse is unity, so plus or minus one. And this is called pin group. And um, here I write uh, the pin group, so it's a unity um, of uh, vectors squaring to one. And actually, there should be always a tri vector. And uh, the y vectors here. So scalars plus y vectors. So here the tri vector component is missing. I apologize for this. Um, the pin group has another subgroup, and that is called the spin group. And in the spin group, you take uh, the pin group, sorry, there should be three, not two, uh, and intersect it with the even set of even multivectors, and then only even multivectors will um, survive. And so um, this set here is spanned by uh, these four entities, scalar and phi vectors. And explicitly in three dimensions, we have the spin group to be um, its unity, and it's even, so cosine phi plus i. And these are all phi vectors um, that square to minus 1 times sine phi. And cosine and sine ensure the uh, unity here. And the spin group in general has a spin plus group where this product is plus one. But this minus sign actually comes only in other types of spaces where you have vectors um, with negative squares as well. So now about group spinners and quantum mechanics, the pin, spin, and spin plus groups are twofold coverings of the orthogonal group, the special orthogonal group, and um, the SO plus uh, slip group, so the component which is connected to the identity. And twofold coverings means you always have two elements, plus minus A, representing um, one element in the groups, all three, SO3 and SO plus. And so this is a natural combination of reflections that leads us to spinners. And this indicates how Clifford's geometric algebra unifies um, um, the, the algebraic description and uh, gives a fully real description because we don't use imaginary vectors from the beginning uh, for quantum mechanics and gives also a geometric interpretation for the entities which square to uh, negative numbers. 